Greetings and uh, welcome to our uh, first of the service that we are calling the Gospel Truth. Uh, my name is Mashudu Ravengani and um, I felt inspired on those Friday evenings that I don't have other engagement and I'm not traveling that we need to share something from the gospel. Now, today we want to go to uh, the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. It is a very common scripture, and uh, I hope uh, the Lord will lead and guide us to find a blessing uh tonight matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name jesus for he will save his people from their sins uh, our title tonight is salvation full and free let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless the reading, the preaching, and the listening of your word in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, we know the story going back to the book of uh, Exodus. After Adam and Eve sinned, uh, we realize that after they sinned, they didn't go to God and ask for forgiveness and apologize for what they had done. Uh, we find out that after they sinned, they decided to find their own solution. Uh, two things they did. They went and uh, sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves as they realized that they were naked. Um, now, I would like to suggest that even today, we still try to find solution to the problem of sin. Because you realize, while on the outside it showed that they were naked, the problem was more in the inside than on the outside. And, and every time as we see people doing certain things on the outside, we must know that the problem is actually in the inside. Now, instead of addressing the problem in the inside, they went to address the outside. They, 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 they went and sued fig leaves to cover the outside so that the outside can look good. And I would like to suggest that even today, we still have many who are Christians, but they are not Christians because the heart of stone has been changed and they now have the heart of flesh, but just because they are wearing fig leaves on the outside. They talk like Christian, sing like Christian, preach like Christian, pray like Christians, but it's all fig leaves. It's all the appearances on the outside. So many of us are wearing fig leaves, but they should have known that uh, our righteousness is like filthy rigs. There is nothing we can do to address the problem of sin. Fig leaves, fig leaves, my dear friends. Uh, you can almost imagine that in the morning they look good as they are covering you. But as the sun, as the day goes by, it becomes dry. The fig leaves dry up and then expose your nakedness. And, and in the same way as we look into the problem of sin today, and we realize the fig leaves that we wear, they might look good while we are in the church. 
singing about our cling to that old rugged cross. But in reality, we are clinging to our sins. Uh, it, may, it may look good in church, uh, uh, but as soon as we leave church, they dry up. As soon as trouble comes our way, uh, they dry up. As soon as death comes into our homes, uh, they dry up. We go and uh, inquire from Sangomas and others of what happened. And they look good when we are at church. As soon as sickness, persistent sickness, as soon as trouble starts, they dry up and expose our nakedness. Fig leaves religion uh, is what many of us are wearing um, now self-made self-righteousness in our own way in the eyes of the people will look good but deep inside we are rotten and stinking because ours is the problem of the heart and and the wise man says the heart is the heart of the matter and and, and Jeremiah says uh, the heart is desperately wicked and who can know it and that's why God wants to address the heart, the heart which is the heart of the problem, not just the appearances on the outside. Uh, so after they sued fig leaves, the next thing that they did was to heed themselves. They hid themselves from God. Every time we find ourselves in sin, when sin has trapped us, when, when we are involved in sin, we want to hide away from God. We want to uh, stay away from God. But we can hide. Uh, we, can, we can hide, but there is no way we can hide from God because God sees us. God knows us. God knows where we are. And that's where the third part was not done by them. It was God. Because we see God comes looking for them. Uh, he calls upon them. And here is where we find the gospel. Uh, as we said, after they sinned, they didn't go to God and apologize and say, God, we have sinned against you and uh, please fix us. No, the gospel is clear. The gospel is about God who comes out of his comfort zone and comes down to our level to look for us. The, the, the true gospel and we realize is that God through his mighty grace he's the initiator, he's the sustainer, he's the champion, he's the sponsor, he's the perfecter and the accomplisher of salvation. And that's why in Isaiah 32 4 verse 11 it says indeed I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out it is why in the book of Romans 5 verse 8 he says while we were yet sinners he died for us it is God who starts the initiative it is not us and in Revelation 13 verse 8, verse 8 he says he is the Lamb of God who was slain in the foundations of the world because God is the one who initiates the process of salvation. Um, so remember at the end of the story, God makes a promise that he will bring forth the seed of a woman who will crush the head of the serpent. So one day, 4,000 years later, an angel came to Joseph in Matthew 1 verse 21. And he says to Joseph, his name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Oh, the name Jesus. Uh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is something about the name Jesus. Simply it means the Savior. But I want to say that he had to be Jesus. Oh, he was Emmanuel, God with us, but he had to be Jesus, the Savior, for he cannot abide with us while we still abide in sin. He was Adonai, the ruler of heaven and earth, but he had to be 
Jesus for it will be useless for him to rule upon us while we are still not saved. Oh, he was El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. Oh, but he had to be Jesus for what is the point of him having all the power in heaven and earth while we remain in our sins. He was Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider, but he had to be Jesus. For what is the point of him providing houses and cars and, and all the luxuries of life while we remain in sin? He had to be Jesus. For, uh, for his name was Jehovah Rapha, the, the Lord my healer. But he had to be Jesus. For what is the point of him healing our bodies while we are still in sin and lost uh, in trespasses and sin. Oh, he was Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner, but he had to be Jesus. For what is the point of him being our banner while we are still practicing witchcraft and worshiping idol? He had to be Jesus. The fact of the matter is he can't teach us he can't rule us. He can't lead us. He can't guide us until he has saved us. So the angel said, his name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. People need to be saved from their sins. Uh, after Adam and Eve sinned, uh, we all became captives of sin. And, and I would like to declare that generally people don't want to be saved from their sins. Uh, they want to be saved from the consequence of their sins. They don't want to be saved from sins. Uh, uh, they want to sin but be saved from the consequence of sins. Oh, they want to sleep around, but don't want to contract HIV AIDS. Uh, they want to steal, but not be caught. They want to tell a lie, but not have to face their lies. People generally don't want to be saved from their sins. They want to be saved from the consequence of their sin. But the angel says, his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You see, you see, somebody living in sin is like someone swimming in the sewage. When you are swimming in the sewage, when you lose your balance, you eat and drink whatever is there in the sewage. You see, a person like that does not need a new swimsuit. To take care of his condition. A person like that does not need a new diet to help with his, his situation. A person like that does not need a new hairstyle to improve hair looks. A person like that does not need a, a skin lightener uh, to, 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 to become a yellow bone of some sort. The person like that needs to be pulled out of the sewage. And the angel said, his name shall be called Jesus, for he will not save people in their sins, but he will save them from their sins. People need to be saved from their sins. You see, the fig leaves religion is a religion where people want to be saved in their sins. They, they, they want to continue sinning and still be saved in their sins. Not too long ago, somebody asked me, and he says, but are we not all sinners? Oh, no, 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 no. We might be called all sinners, but they are those that Jesus has pulled out of their sins. So true salvation, one has to come out of the sewage. Uh, uh, the sewage of sin. Uh, if, if, if somehow, if before you met Jesus, you belong to some site of a gang or a criminal gang, when you meet Jesus, you must bid farewell to your gang. You must come out. Because you cannot be saved in your sin. If you used to practice some form of witchcraft, when you meet Jesus, you must come out 
of the witchcraft association if there were little things under your pillow little things in your cupboard uh, when you meet Jesus you must come out of those practices if you were a prostitute when you meet Jesus you must come out oh uh, I'm talking I want to come close to home because if, if somehow you were cohabiting Lord have mercy. If somehow you were living in sin, uh, you were living within uh, in marriage when you are not married, but you hear Jesus calling your name uh, and Jesus is calling you and, and you want to come out, you must come out, you must pack your bags and say, I have decided to follow Jesus. No more turning back. No more turning back because now I belong to Jesus and this Jesus uh, who came down from heaven and came down to your level. This Jesus uh, who finds you in the miry clay <laughs> and he pulled you out of the miry clay and, and set your feet on the solid rock. This Jesus who put a song in your mouth to say, Lord, lifted me. This Jesus who has done all of that is able to provide for you when you decide that I have decided to follow Jesus. Uh, uh, so, so somehow whatever you were involved in before you met Jesus, when you meet Jesus, you need to come out. You need to come out. There must be be a difference in the lifestyle that you used to be. <laughs> I like the pictures they show when you're of losing weight. They say this was a before picture and there's an after picture. So, 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 this is the things I used to do. Oh, uh, these are the places I used to go. Oh, uh, this is the crowd I used to hang around with. But now I have met Jesus. He has pulled me out from the crowd. He has pulled me out from wrong relationship. If somehow you're not even cohabiting, but you know that the practice in this relationship, whether you call it dating or courtship, is leading you continually to sin. It is leading you to violate the seventh commandment. When you hear Jesus calling your name, when Jesus is calling you, you need to come out because the angel said his name shall be called Jesus, uh, for he shall save his people, not in their sins, but he shall save them from their sins. Our sins, they might be small, they might be nice, they might be pretty, they might be attractive, they might be enjoyable, they might be exciting. We need to come out of them. Otherwise, they will kill you. I know there's some little petty sins that are so nice. You, you, you take it out and you look at it and you polish it and, and you put it back. That sin will eventually kill you, will destroy you. Exodus 20 verse 1. The Lord God says, I am the Lord God who brought you out of slavery in Egypt. Before he gives them the commandment, he takes them out of Egypt. Before he expects them to obey him, he saves them first. He takes them out. Now, you see, it is impossible to keep God's commandment when you are in Egypt. When you are still in slavery of sin. This is why God does not go to Moses and say, go to the children of Israel and, and give them the commandments to obey. He says, no, 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 he doesn't do that. He says, go to them and, and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. So, so, so God, even God himself does not expect us to keep his commandments while we are still in sin. God does not expect us to keep his commandments while we are still in Egypt. And that's why God sends Moses, he says to Moses, let my people go. And I would like to believe that even tonight, God is talking to the pharaohs of your life. God is talking to circumstances that are holding you. God is talking to your own slavery and imprisonment. And he says, let my people go. 
God says, I want a people that will serve me. I want a people that will worship me. He says, let my people go. Because they will not be able to obey as long as they are in Egypt. They will not be able to do my will as long as they are in Egypt. And that's why God says, let my people go. And I want to say to you today, you see, you can't stop adoption and fornication as long as you are in Egypt. You can't stop lying as long as you are in Egypt. You see, sin is part of the culture and the behavior and the practice of Egypt. And that's why you need to be saved. Oh, you need to be delivered. You need to come out. And those of us who are Christians, we must stop expecting people to stop sinning as long as they're not saved. We are asking them to do mission impossible. It is impossible for us to stop. And some of us, we grew up within the religion and the context of laws and rules. We were expected to keep the commandments without us being saved. As long as you are still in sin, it will become impossible to keep the commandments. And I want to say to you tonight, if doing God's commandment is a body, if doing God's commandment is a strength, if you struggle from day to day, it might be a sign, my dear brother. It might be a sign, my dear sister, that you are still in Egypt. And the gospel that you need is a gospel of let my people go. To leave Egypt and to follow God. Because it is impossible. The angel said, his name, his name, his name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. So when we look back, we realize that God, in his own mercy, take the initiative to go and save his people so that when they are saved, they can obey him. Oh, uh, this challenge is the foundation of many of our religion and practices which prescribed obedience. They are putting the cart in front of the horse, which prescribe obedience before one has been saved. And when he, when you are saved, when he, hey, you are born again, when you are a new creature, it becomes automatic. The things I used to do, the appetite for sin has changed. The appetite for sin has gone with the old man because I'm a new creation. A brand new man. Uh, what he requires of me becomes natural to do. Let's talk, let's conclude by talking about the three steps for salvation. And many of us who are preachers, we, 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 we often uh, talk about terms of salvation without explaining for the simple people so that they can know and understand how they can be saved and how they can find uh, salvation. So the first thing that we need to realize is that Jesus came to save us from the penalty of sin. It's called justification. Jesus came to save us from the power of sin. It's called sanctification. Jesus came to save us from the presence of sin or is going to save us from the presence of sin. It's called glorification. Three things. First one, he saves us from the penalty of sin. It's called justification. He saves us from the power of sin in our life. It's called sanctification. And he will come to save us from the presence of sin, which is called glorification. And, 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 and as we explain them quickly, the justification, there we find it in Romans 3, verse 23 and 24. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but being justified uh, freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, and I, 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 need, I need to explain this for someone to, to, to understand. Uh, you see, before I met Jesus, before I met Jesus, I was following the devil. Whatever the devil said I must do, that's what I used to do. 
Oh, but as I was moving along the way, I hear Jesus calling my name. Uh, and, and at that time, I, I, I accept the salvation that has been given by him. At that very moment, I'm justified. Uh, I, I, my, my, I, as I repent, I am justified. And when I'm justified, I make a right about 10. Like a pathfinder, I do a right about 10. You see, before I met Jesus, I used to follow the devil and the ways that he used to do. When I am justified, uh, I, I decide to follow Jesus uh, and what he instructs me. So salvation is not where you are, but it is where you are facing. Before I met Jesus, I was lost. I was facing hell. And I was doing whatever the hell doctrines required of me. Uh, but when I met Jesus and, and, and I accept him as a personal savior, I make a right about ten. I start following Jesus each day that he passes by. But we must understand. That the day I decide to follow Jesus, I don't become perfect. Like a baby, I learn to walk. I stumble and fall. And we need to realize that as long as I'm facing the right direction, it doesn't matter how many times I stumble and I fall. As long as I'm facing the right direction, God will save me. Salvation is not where you are. You see, there are saints that have already gone ahead, that have already moved, moved ahead. But I am just starting out. But if the trumpet sound while I'm still behind here, but facing the right direction, I will be saved. So, so, so as soon as I'm justified, the sanctification process, when God works with the power of sin in my life, when he removes those desires of the things that I used to like, that I used to enjoy, as he changes me, it's a step process. It's a growth process. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter how many times you fall. You see, the, the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times and rises seven times. So I might fall as long as I keep on rising. I keep on rising. Face in the right direction. And eventually, when the trumpet sound, I will be glorified. I will be saved from the presence of from the from the presence of sin. Because even though I'm saved today, there are people who get on my nerves. There are people around me. There's pain and, and results of sin. But when he shall come, I will be saved. So what is salvation? Salvation is like someone. Who is swimming in the sea. While they are there in the sea. They start drowning. And while they were drowning. Somebody throw. They come with a helicopter. And throw in a rope. When you catch that rope. You are justified. But your salvation depends on holding on to that rope. From the time where you are in the middle of the sea. Going to the land. You are being justified. When you reach the land, you are glorified. Your salvation is complete. So somebody says, are you saved? You say, yes, I'm saved. I'm being saved and I'll be saved. I'm justified. I'm being sanctified and I'll be glorified when he shall come. Let's conclude. A young man came to the elders of the church and he says, I want to be baptized. And the young man, the, the, the elder says, why do you want to be baptized? He says, I'm saved. They said to him, what do you know about salvation? He says to them, salvation is a partnership between me and Christ. At this, the elders are offended. They are upset. So what do you mean it's a partnership between you and Christ? He says, uh, I did my part. Christ did his part. It's a partnership. At this, the elders are, are about to throw him out. They are annoyed. They are, they are upset. Then they said, young man, tell us, what was your part and what was Christ's part? The young man says, my part was to see. And his part was to go to the cross to die for my sins. It's a partnership. Oh, I want to say to the church that is gathered online and say salvation is a partnership between 
a sinner and a savior. Uh, 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 I did my part to sin. And he did his part to go to the cross to die from my sin. So that today there is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Where sinners plunge beneath the blood. Lose all their guilty states. Oh I want to declare today that if that blood has power. That blood never loses its power. Oh it has got power to change the west of sinners. Oh there is power in that blood for it flows. To the highest mountain and it goes to the lowest valley. There is power, wonderful power in the blood. And the question today, would you be free from your burden and sin? There is power, wonderful power in the blood. It's a partnership. You see, salvation is not for some of you who are holy, who have never sinned. Uh, but salvation is for bad boys like me who have done wrong, who have been to places we're not supposed to go, who, who have done things we're not supposed to do, uh, uh, who, who have said things we're not supposed to say. Salvation is for those of us who have fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, it's not for those of you who are, who are sinless. But if you have sinned, if you have fallen short, you qualify for the partnership between Jesus and you. Oh, there is a Savior waiting to partner with you. He says, come, 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 let's reason together. It doesn't matter how bad your situation might be. He says, come, let's reason together. We will talk it out. It's a partnership between a sinner and a Savior. We will never make it by ourselves. It is He who came to our level and he pulled us out of sin. And today, if you want him in your life, that partnership is still open. Our oh, grace and mercy is still there for bad boys and bad girls who says, we have heard his word. The angel said his name shall be called Jesus for he will save his people not in their sins. But he will save them from their sins. And, and you're saying today, Lord, I, I want to come out of my sins. Uh, I don't want to die in my sins. Uh, I don't want to go to church carrying my sins and, and go out carrying my sins. I don't want to go to church after form of fashion as a routine and a ritual. Uh, uh, I don't want to go there as a dry devil and come back as a wet one. But I want to be changed. I want to be saved. I want to be pulled out of the sewage of sin. Oh, I want to say today, he's still waiting upon you. And he says, come unto me, all of you who are tired and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I'll give you, you, you have been used and abused by the he, he, he's going to change and he's going to give us the power to do that we cannot do for ourselves. If it is your wish, surrender your heart to him even as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the moment that you've given us tonight. You have chosen to speak to us in this way and we just want to pause and give you all the glory and all the honor for what you've done. And we want to declare there is no God like you. And Lord, here we are. Surrendering our hearts to you, bad boys and bad girls who, who want to be part of your partnership with you. And we say, Lord, save us today. Save us tonight. Uh, somehow in our little room where we might be, maybe looking at the phone or looking in the computer. Lord, save us wherever we might be. Save us from our sins. Save us from the groupings that we find ourselves. Save us even from some of the corrupt church groupings. Save us. Save us tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you.